Hello, it's Josie here and today we're going to clip Wiggins. As you can see, Wiggins has a bit of a very furry coat. Uh, Wiggins is one of my earlier horses and he's got a special place in my heart. He has Cushing's and that's why his coat is like this. And in Australia, we have disgustingly hot summers, particularly down in South Australia. And so the kindest thing to him is to take his coat off him. Wiggins has always been known to have an attitude and that's why his name is Attitude his show name and he um, can sometimes be a little bit smart with the clippers. He's not scared of them, but he tells Brittany he's scared of them. So I'm going to work through that with him and show you how I work through a horse that's nervous with clippers. If you think about clipping a horse and you think about what you're actually going to do, the horse has to be tolerant of the noise of the clipper and the feeling of the clipper on them and then the feeling of the clipper on them vibrating. So that's three different things that you really should have your horse pretty desensitized to before you're going to do it. If you just decide you're going to clip your horse today, come out with a pair of clippers, turn it on and your horse runs off, more for you. That's pretty silly. You always need to set your horse up, okay? Set them up to win. It's the only fair thing to do. So that's what we'll do with Wiggins. I will actually stand at the back here and turn the clippers on and off and see what he does. He may shoot out and if he does, that's fine. We'll just bring him back in. What I want you to remember though, is that you release the pressure. So the pressure on this horse is going to be the noise of the clipper or the clipper on him. That will be the pressure. So you release that pressure when he's doing what you want him to do. And my aim is for him to stand still so that I can clip him. So I will turn the noise of the clipper off when I first start that when he stands still. Sometimes you have to be really quick when you're doing a young or a really green horse and flick the clipper off as all four feet on the ground. I'm going to turn the clippers on a reasonable away away from the horse. I'm not gonna take them up to him and turn them on because that's actually expecting him to deal with two things at once, this noise and these things near him. So I'm just gonna turn them on and turn them off. Oh, so it helps if you've got the power on. Okay, so as you can see in real life, I actually turned them off when he was still moving. We all make mistakes. It's just part of horsemanship. I might actually see if his owner will just go and stand with him if she doesn't mind. I'm just gonna turn this on now. This time I'm gonna watch his feet. I'm gonna try and turn them off when he is still. Perfect. I'm going to do it again. So he's still a little bit nervous about it. So I'm just going to do this a few times. If you were working with a really green horse who had never had this, which I've done with mine actually, working up to winter when I'm going to clip them, every time they came in here, I would turn the, I'd actually turn the clippers on in my shed and then move them closer each time. I might spend two weeks working up to doing this and I've never had a problem with it that I can't clip. Sorry, that's going to be very loud because of my mic. But as you can see... All right, so now I'm going to bring the clippers up to him. I'm not going to have them on and bring them up to him because that's two things. And I'm going to actually put them on him and see if he will just relax with them on him. And when I actually do run them and put them on him, I won't... Um, be cutting hair because trust me I've done this you do one and then the horse is just like ah, ah and then you're left with a patch on there while you do the work for the next week that's how I can teach you these things I've made all the mistakes all right so I'm a little bit closer so it's pretty noisy so I'm going to stand here it's all right I'll let them have a look I don't have a problem if these things actually have a smell to them good boy Good boy, good boy. So I'm feeling a little bit comfortable that I can probably start this closer to him. Good boy. Sometimes if you've got smaller, quieter ones, you can start with them. So now I'm gonna actually turn it on and I'm going to, um, I'm just moving back to make sure we're in shot. And I'm going to just put it on his shoulder going.
So I don't know if that was in shot, but I hope you saw that I took that off when he stopped moving. Okay, so we just start it. And one of the mindsets I have and I always keep with me when I'm working with my horses is I've got all day. I've got all day. If I'm trying to put a horse on a float that won't go on, I've got all day. Um, and in doing that, I don't actually try and teach horses things exactly the day I need it. And that's probably another uh, principle to think of. Good boy. So he was really good then. So I'm just going to walk away and take the pressure of this and me way away from him. Bless him. And I pretty much think that we can probably get on with our clipping now and turn this hairy mammoth into a nice, smooth, lean machine. Okay, so let's see if he'll let me cut a little bit off of him. Come in though. I'm not just going to come in, turn it on and slap it on him. Turn it on. Good boy. And there you see under that horse a sleek machine. And I hate to tell Brittany this, but she's clipping him, not me. I hate clipping horses. <laughs> Thank you. See? Clipped. He looks like the beautiful beast he was when he was 10 years younger. Lost all that hair. A little bit of a makeover for Wiggy. <laughs> Sorry, Wiggy. Do I laugh at myself all the time? Yeah, yeah.